Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I praise you, Lord Jesus. God, we honor you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I praise you, Lord. God, you're worthy of all praise. God, you're worthy of all the glory. Lord Jesus, God. Just sitting there watching Cason up there. and just Jesus saying, suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And I just, you know, I can't talk. I just end up crying. So I just, that's kind of, you know, I remember sitting back at the back church back when there was just that part of the church and all this was not there and Larry sitting over there and me sitting on there beside Larry and, and everything he do I do and I just copy him and but that's yeah I gotta shut up so anyway yeah, I'm, a, I'm a weenie so anyway thank the Lord for his mercy and grace everything he's done for us this morning continuing on with our lessons on uh, Christian ministry um this morning we're talking about the ministry of teaching, and if you've got your books and you're looking at it, you'll see that the, the title of the, mess, of, the, of the lesson is the ministry of teaching. But I've changed the title just a little bit, and I want to talk about the ministry of learning and teaching. Because before you can teach, you've got to learn. And before you can even learn, you've got to learn to learn. <laughs> you have to learn how to to learn, the ministry of learning and teaching. The focus thought this morning is God gave the church the responsibility to disciple all nations through the ministry of teaching. The focus verse is, uh, focus verse us, is Matthew 28, 19 and 20. This is the great commission. This is the commission that Jesus gave the disciples uh, right before he was called up after the resurrection. He told them, go. And so this, this commission was the commission that he gave to the disciples that he also gave to us. This was handed down to us. This is the exact same thing that we're supposed to do because we're all supposed to be disciples of Christ. That's all of our job. This isn't just for the ministry. This isn't just for ministers and preachers and evangelists and stuff like that. This is for everybody. So he said, go ye therefore, told them to go, and he told them to teach. He told them all to teach all nations, and he told them to baptize. <laughs> he said, go, teach, and then baptize. That's why if people have questions about baptism. If baptism's not required, then we don't have to go, and we don't have to teach, and we don't have to evangelize. He said, go forth. He said, teach them, baptize them in the name. Not the names. There's not a name of each of those. He said, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It was a singular name. When, in, in Acts chapter 4, when the disciples were in jail, the elders asked, wanted to talk. It was The elders of the, of the synagogue brought them up there and wanted to ask him. He said, by what power and by what name have you done this? And Peter got up to him, and he preached Jesus to him. He said, neither is there salvation any, under in, uh, in any other name. He said, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must, where we must be saved. And that's why I said last week, there's no confusion between Acts 2.38 and Matthew 28.19. When you talk about the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, that name is Jesus. So Acts 2.38 just, just, just says that. So, uh, so you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. So Jesus said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then he t told them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded. Everything that Jesus commanded them to do, he said, teach them to observe it. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Uh, lesson text is Romans 12 and 7. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, and or he that teaches on teaching. And then Acts 2, uh, 26 and 36. And you're going to see Philip here actually fulfill that great commission. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. He was preaching a revival, and God took him from the many and took him to one person. God took him from the 99 to go find that one person. He said, uh, go rise, go uh, toward the south and to the way that goeth down from Jerusalem and to Gaza, which is, a, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who uh, had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. He said, Go. Told him to go. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him and read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest. And I'm just telling you, if you find somebody reading the Bible and you want to give them a quick Bible study, the quickest words that you can get to find out if they're interested in, in finding truth, 
just tell them, understand this, what thou readest, because I've used it on people before. And it's a, it's a quick, it's a door opener to things where you can actually talk about the Bible to people. And he said, how can, how can I accept some man should guide me? He needed somebody to guide him, somebody to teach him. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of this scripture, which he read, was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a d- lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and this is talking about Christ. And who shall declare his gener- and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or another man? He said, Who is he talking about? Is he talking about himself or somebody else? And then Ph- Philip opened his mouth, began at the same scripture, and preached unto him. Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and he went, and he taught, and then he said, then he said he went and found water, and the eunuch said, here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? So he fulfilled the commission that God gave him. You may be seated this morning. He went and fulfilled the complete commission that Jesus had given to them. <clears throat> the ministry of learning and teaching, or just learning to teach. Uh, this week we were at choir practice, and, and we were talking a little bit, and, <clears throat> and I mentioned that there was an opening at the school for a PE teacher. Uh, there was a teacher that had left and found a, an administrative position at another school, and uh, he was leaving uh, the school system. And Brandon said something to the effect that said, hey, I'm going to apply for that position. Do you think I'll get it? <laughs> I was like, No. <laughs> No matter, Brandon's a great guy. You talk about being able to work with kids, I believe Brandon would do an excellent job. I think he, you know, physical education, that'd be right down his thing. He'd, you know, get to, get to do all that kind of stuff. I, I think he'd be great at it. Uh, and, and I think Brandon's a great person. I think he'd be a good role model. Um, and he's got a little bit of clout maybe with the school system. I'm just saying, you know, so maybe. But, but no matter how much he's got, no matter any of, uh, any of that, right now he couldn't become a PE school teacher. There's no way he could do it. Because he hasn't been to school. He hasn't gone to school to be a PE teacher. He does not have the degree that it takes to be able to teach the class. He never learned to teach PE. Physical education. Now think about this. This is physical education. I don't know about you guys, what y'all did in physical education, but we ran around and played. You know, we played basketball. We threw dodgeballs at each other. Uh, we, it was a great class. I loved it. I had Bob Kegley. Bob Kegley is one of my was one of my favorite teachers, loved him. We learned hunter education, we done driver's education. Uh, we had the little scooters that sat on the ground, had the wheels, and we rode around and played basketball on the scooters and stuff. Uh, and it was like, there was, it was more like bumper cars than it was, or demolition derby, let's, let's not bumper cars. It was more like demolition derby than it was anything. Um, easiest and most fun class in high school. It, it, it was great. How hard could it be able to teach a class like that? How hard can it be to tell kids, oh, I'll go do a few push-ups, go do a few sit-ups, a little pull-ups, whatever, and go play? But before you can be a teacher that can actually teach the class, you still have to go to college. You still have to get the, to the, the degree to be able to teach it. You must learn how to teach. Uh, you look at uh, there's specific curriculum you have to take to actually to be able to teach, teach PE. Sister April, she teaches math. Uh, she teaches some hard math, correct? You do, do you do calculus and some of that stuff too? And you can or whatever. She's got a master's degree. She's got her master's degree and stuff. And, and she's gone pretty far to be able to teach math. And, and if you ask me, in the big scheme of things and, and getting through life, what do you need more, P.E. or math? I think in the big... <laughs> okay, somebody said P.E.s. You need to go back to school, Tom. I think you need math, but for, you know a lot, a lot more. It's a lot more important th- than PE. Um, but so she's, you know, she's gone. She's got the master's degree. Could you teach the PE class? Now, first of all, she probably wouldn't want to teach the PE class. But Sister April, are you, would you, would they allow you to teach the PE class? Probably not, would they? Because she doesn't have the education to teach PE. She has the education to teach. Math, but she doesn't have the education to teach me PE. The minimum education requirement for teaching physical education in kindergarten through 12th grade, any of those grades, is a four years bachelor's degree in health and physical education. That's what you have to have. If you don't have that, you can't teach it. It's pretty, pretty simple. You need the bachelor's degrees to be able to teach kids how to play. 
how to have fun, how to, how to do exercise. Because, of course, it's more than just that. There's the, they teach them now. They teach them everything from uh, nutrition. They teach them a little bit of everything to do it correctly. So you must learn in order to teach. Bring up that slide, um, the, the first slide I had, the one I actually made, please. <clears throat> the one at the very end. No. Okay, so I'll just, to learn, the one that says to learn. Thomas, you didn't show him what I wanted. <sighs> okay, anyway, so to learn is to gain knowledge of, to understanding. Okay, there we go. To learn is to gain knowledge of, understanding of, or skill in something by three different things. By study, by instruction, or by experience. We learn through three different ways. I can learn something by studying it. I can learn something by being instructed in it. Or I can learn something by having experience in it. When I want to do something, uh, when it comes to wood, I go, I go to uh, YouTube. You know, if I want to learn how to do something different, I, go, I grab a YouTube video and I start studying it. I'll start reading it. I'll look up, uh, I'll look up websites. How do I want to do this? I, I begin to study it. I love watching the videos. I, I, I'm a learner through through uh, visual. I'm a visual learner. I, I, you know, I can read instructions. I, I don't mind to read instructions, but sometimes I lose my patience with instructions. If you give me the picture of it, I can do it a lot quicker than reading the instructions of it. Now, sometimes you got to have the, the words. you got to have the words, but I, I like the pictures of it. So I'll watch the video, and, and I'll study, and, and that's the way I like to learn. I can do it by studying it myself. Uh, I can be instructed to learn also. I can learn things through instruction. A couple of the things that I've never done that I want to do eventually before, uh, before too long is I want to learn how to weld, and I want to learn how to mess around with oxygen acetylene. Took ag class for two years, never learned it because they never instructed us on how to do it. They showed us, they give us a real quick example of it. Here's how you do this, here's how you do that. But everything else was all revolved around wood. They had an old car in there that we beat around on an old car and stuff, but we never learned how to weld. We never mess with oxygen settling. So that's something that I want to do. And before I can do that, I don't believe that I'll be able to watch a YouTube video. I, don't, I think I'm going to have to have somebody that really knows how to do it to sit down with me and instruct me, this is what you do. Here's how many times you turn the oxygen. Here's how many times you turn the acetylene. This is how you weld. This is the things you want to do. So I'm going to have to have somebody instruct me. And then on some of those things, I'm going to have to actually write them down because if you don't do something on a regular basis and you never and you wait till you're almost 50 years old to learn it you're probably going to forget it you know if you don't do it every day so I'm going to have to be instructed by an instructor who's somebody that's already learned how to do it somebody that already knows how to teach it and then there's experience you can learn through experience I, I learned how to do a lot of things through experience and you learn how to do things by repeatedly doing it over and over and over. You experience it. Think about driving a car. You, you don't study. You can read the book, but that don't really tell you how to, how to drive a car. Somebody can kind of instruct you, but the best way to learn how to drive a car is get behind the wheel. Hit a couple of trees, a couple of cars, or whatever it takes, and you learn. Don't do that no more. You learn from practice makes what? Perfect. You learn. So we learn by doing. Uh, there's some things that I, I, I have to do for me, myself, that I have to do in order to learn them. I, I'm working on a table right now, and there's a, it's a long piece of uh, cherry, and it's got a couple of splits in it. And so in order to keep that wood from continuing to split through it, they have a, what's called a bow tie uh, or a butterfly joint that you can put in it. And so you have to go into it, and right there to split, you have to lay, uh, you kind of have to draw your design uh, like a bow tie and you chisel it out and just big enough to put the piece of wood in there and then you drive it in there and glue it in there and what that does is that holds those two pieces of wood together and it keeps where it's splitting and it won't allow it to split anymore well i'm working on something i'm thinking about selling and so i'm not going to do the very first one on that one so i've watched my youtube videos i've watched that but the best way for me to learn how to do it is I've practiced it. I've done it on a couple pieces of old pine. I've got a couple of two-by-fours. I've done it. I begin chiseling, and i got a piece out. And, I, and I've gotten to the point now where I'm almost comfortable with doing it because I don't want to make something as sloppy, ugly, and try to sell it to somebody. I, I want to do it. So, uh, so I, I have to do it through the experience of actually doing it over and over. Study, instruction, and experience. These are the ways that we learn. 
But it's possible that I can study. It's possible that I can be instructed. And it's possible that I can even experience things and still never learn. Because it happens in school all the time. <laughs> it happens in schools every day. They're instructed. You have teachers that teach. You have kids that maybe study. <laughs> some of them study. Some of them don't. And there's examples. Uh, Sister April, when you're in class, do you get up on the, on the chalkboard? And sometimes do you make some of the kids get up and do problems? you ever do that? Probably, maybe. Oh, okay, they don't do chalkboards anymore. <laughs> Whiteboard, oh, whatever. I'm old. You remember the water you used to have to wash the, the chalkboards on that we had up there in Hollybrook? And they were, ooh, they were nasty. They were brown water, ugh. Anyway, anyway. So anyway, but some of the kids, they get experience. In ag class, you get the experience. They give you the experience of these. And even though they do all of these things, they still fail. They still fail the, the class. It's possible that kids may have learning a learning disability. Maybe kids can't learn under normal circumstances. They have to have more one-on-one -on -one instructions because they have that short attention span. They can't do it. Any number of things that can interrupt that ability to be able to learn, but a lot of them, they don't find that thing that they have to do to be able to learn. I had attention span issues when I grew up. Uh, even when I do Sunday school now, I get into a, you can ask Brenda, I, I, I like silence, I, have to, I like to be in the room alone, I have background noise, I have learned to be able to, I have learned to learn, I have taught myself the things that I have to do to be able to focus and to be able to concentrate, I like background noise, I have a, a noise machine that goes on and it keeps my mind, it keeps that squirrel mentality of my mind from, from, from thinking about that and I can actually focus on things, you know, I like quiet, I like, you know, Brenda comes in and I'm, she knows I've barked at her. Honey, what in the world? You know what I'm doing? I don't know, you know. I gotta get this done. Do any of you like to have music going on when you do things? Some people like to have music because it kind of preoccupies the back of your mind and allows you to be able to focus on things. And this kind of showed up when I was in fifth grade. I come home with two F's and a D one time. And mom, being the great mother that she is, she really helped me through my problem. She got out the spatula of education which is not to be confused with the Board of Education, which is used for basically the exact same thing. And she applied it liberally to my rear end. I had to, she missed me and there was a chip in the wall where she hit the wall. After that, I learned how to learn. <laughs> learn. I figured it out. I learned what I needed to do to learn because I was properly motivated. She didn't go down to the schools and fuss at the teacher. She didn't go down to the schools and fuss at the school system. Y'all need to teach my kid. She taught her kid how to learn. She said, you're going to figure this thing out, boy, one way or the other or, or, or else. I learned that in order for me to learn how to spell, I had to get off into some room all by myself and be by myself. And to learn, to, even when I was in high school, to learn to spell 10 words, I had to be in a room for 30 minutes to try to memorize those words. And then I would come out, mom would test me on them, and then when I didn't get them, back to the room. And then when I come back out and didn't get them, back to the room. For 10 words to memorize. But that's, I just, now Darren, he absorbed it. I mean, he looked at it, he never studied. I never saw him do homework. I mean, it was just like he was a sponge. All these things, and but I had to work at things. There was math, I didn't have problems in math. A lot of things I did, but for, for, for memorization, for things like that, I struggled with that. I had to learn how to learn, and I eventually did. I ended up in beta in high school. Had to, you know, I think you gotta have a B average or whatever it is. I had to learn how to learn. And I had to be motivated, and mom taught me how that lesson on learning. She said, son, you're going to learn. I experienced it. My backside received instruction to be able to help me. But I did learn. And sometimes in life, I've got to have a refresher in this. I have to learn again how to learn. I have to be reminded, Dwayne, you have to, in order to be able, you know, it's like if I waited to the last minute for a lesson or something like that, and, and, and kids are running around, things going on, you can forget it. I, I got, to, I was like, I'll go into the mountains, I'll go someplace else. I've learned that, I, I've learned that for Sunday school lessons or for messages, I operate better in the mornings than I do in the evenings because my mind's fresh and I don't have all the goings on, the, the days happening there. Sometimes I, I have to remind myself, sometimes God reminds me that I need a refresher. 
Sometimes God gives me that. Sometimes bosses at work have to remind me that. Sometimes I get it from Brenda, you know. But I learn, but, but, sometimes, but sometimes, sometimes people never learn to learn. They never figure it out what they have to do. And think about how God teaches us, okay? God placed Adam in the garden, and he instructed him. He told him how to dress it, how to keep it, not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam eventually taught Eve, don't eat of this tree, because when, this, when the serpent came to her, this, she knew she was not supposed to do it. And even though they had been instructed on it, they never learned. They never learned, I'm not supposed to do that. They had been told, God had told them, but they never learned the real lesson, I'm supposed to obey God and listen to his voice, and they didn't listen to his commands. And it cost them, and it still costs us today. They eventually were punished. They had the Board of Education applied to them, too, by God. I'd rather mom apply the Board of Education to me any day than I'd rather have God apply the Board of Education to me. But what, a, but what a lesson they had to learn. But what a way they had to learn that lesson. David had, to, David had learned that he could, what he could do to fight with Lord, the Lord fighting with him by fighting the lion and by fighting the bear. And how God could empower him how to defeat his enemies. And he used these experiences when he came to Goliath. Here was an experience he had. He'd had experience with the lion. He'd had experience with the bear. And when he come across Goliath, bring up 1 Samuel 17, 36 and 37, please. The servant, this is David talking to Saul. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be one of, as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the, of the living God. In the second one, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me. He learned that he could trust God. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he's going to deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And then Paul, Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. He learned through these experiences. He used the experiences that he had had from God to be able to learn that I can trust God. I, I can depend on God. And God gives us those experiences... In life, David had instruction in the Word. He studied the Word. He loved the Word of God. Bring up uh, Psalms 1, 1 through 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of God, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Psalms 1, 19, 35 says, Make me to go in thy path, of thy commandments. David was pleading with God, God, make me to go in the path of your commandments, and therein do I delight. God, I want to be in the path of your commandments. I want to make me, God, force me to walk right. And he was studying and he was instructing, but even though he wanted to do it, he didn't do it. Even though he, he delighted in the law of the God, even though he Asked, he begged God, God, make me, please, God, make me to live the way you want me to live. He still didn't do it. He wanted to be right in God's eyes. He had issues with learning that lesson. He committed adultery. He was a murderer. Even though he didn't kill the man, he was still guilty of it. And because, now think, look at this, because David failed to learn the lessons of walking in the commandments of God, he learned he failed in learning to walk in the laws of God. He forgot the lessons that he learned through the lion, the bear, and Goliath. He forgot them. That, that lesson that God had given him, that, that, that trust, that he had learned to trust in God and to depend on God. Think about that. Listen, because David failed to learn the lesson of walking in God's commandments, of learning to walk by what God says, he forgot all the lessons that he had already learned. Even the thing that he learned through experience, trusting God, because he numbered the people. God said, don't number the people. David went out and numbered the people because he wanted to see how big his army was. He wanted to see, let me see how many men I got. Let's see, we'll look, check all the weapons out if I need to go. He, he lost his trust. I'll, think about this. What if God teaches, trying to teach us a lesson to walk in his commandments, and all the things that God has given us because we fail to walk in those commandments, we lose all the things, that the trust, and the dependency and all the things that God has uh, provision, all the things that God has given to us, all of a sudden God says, you forgot those. 
because I didn't decide, I didn't learn to walk by the commandments and by the laws of God, I'll forget everything else that goes by there. That's why it's so important for us to learn to learn. <laughs> it's so important for us to learn to think of Israel. God would bless them. God separated them. They won battles. They didn't have to fight. They ate from gardens. They didn't have to plant. They had the experiences of God's blessings on them. And God, God instructed them. He gave them the word. Bring up Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 6. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on, on, on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you'll do this, all this is going to happen. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And it keeps on going and going until about verse 12, verse 13. God instructed them, if you'll not depart out of the law, if you'll walk the commands, if you'll live right, you'll walk right, you'll talk right, you'll do right, here's what's going to happen. I am going to bless and bless and bless. And when you come in, I'm going to bless you. And when you go out, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with your cats, your dogs, your cows, your horses, your sheep, your ant farm, whatever you got, I'm going to bless it. Whatever you lay your hand to, I am going to bless it. He gave them the experiences so that should have stuck with them that if we'll just trust... Man, they came through... Man, they, uh, You had all the plagues in Egypt that never touched them. When they came through the Red Sea, God parted the Red Sea. They went through dry, on the dry land. And as soon as they got through, all of a sudden the sea goes down and defeats their enemies. God had done all these things and you would have thought in the back of their minds, we can trust God. If I'll just walk in the commandments of God. But, they ne but God warned them. What would happen? Bring up 28, 13 through 19. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above, uh, thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt never... Not, God said, I'll make you above. You'll only be number one. You'll never be number two. Never number two. You won't even be in second place. God said, I'll make you number one. And you'll not, you'll not be in last place. You'll never be in second place. You'll be number one. If thou hearken to the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or the left or go after other gods to serve them. But. But if, thou shalt, but if it shall come to pass, thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that, that all these curses shall come upon thee. Remember he said that all the blessings will overtake you. How would you like to be in life walking in God's commandments and all of a sudden the blessings of God just, just run over top of you? I mean, just blessings upon blessings, just overtaking you, just making you stumble over. God just blessing you upon blessings. You ever been blessed by God and it's just like one blessing right after the other and it's just like, God, I, how's all this come, God? I just, man, thank God for all the blessings. I didn't know where all this was coming from. It hit me in the back there. But he said, if you don't hearken, the curses are going to do the exact same thing to thee. Curses shalt thou be in the city. Curses shalt thou be in the field. Curses shalt thou, shalt thou basket and thy, shalt, curses shall be thy basket and thy store. Curses shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Curses shalt thou be when thou comest in. Curses shalt thou be when thou goest out. I'm not going to read all of it, but this, the curses are a lot longer than what the blessings are. Everybody said, I got homework this week. Man, that was lame. Everybody say, I got homework this week. Let's say it one more time. I got homework this week. Well, let's do it one more time. I got homework this week. Okay, that's good. Everybody take Deuteronomy 28 and read it. And put yourself, not as Israel, or don't think of Israel, think of you. Think of your life. Think of yourself. I'm, everybody say, I'm going to read Deuteronomy. Everybody say Deuteronomy 28. You're going to take that and you're going to read that and you're going to think, that's me. That's me. This is my life. It, it, that song, it's your life, it's now or never. Here it is. Deuteronomy 28, it's you. It's, it's your life, it's now or never. And because Israel didn't learn this lesson, they never learned to walk in the commandments of God. 
God taught them. God instructed them. God gave them experiences. God said study to show that, you know, told them to study and said, don't let the, this book of the law depart out of your mouth. Let it always be there. And when they never learned the lesson from God, God did what? He applied the Board of Education to them. <laughs> they suffered throughout all the Old Testament, and eventually God cut them off and went to who? Us. And now all those blessings and all those curses are available to us. Now, I don't know about y'all. I think I'd rather have the blessings than the curses. We've got a chance at the exact same blessings that God had promised Israel. Israel suffered two thousand has been suffering for over two thousand years now. And the curses went to their children, to their children's children, and it was at their own request. Place it upon us and to our children and our children's children. Because they failed to le learn. They failed to receive instruction. They received lesson after lesson after lesson, but it never stuck. And God has given us the commandment to go and to teach. We are to teach the world to observe the things that God has commanded. We are to teach our families. We are to teach our friends to observe the things that God has commanded. Deuteronomy 28. God has told us to take that to the world, take that to our families and friends. And how we're supposed to teach them the love of Christ. We're supposed to teach, him, teach them that he died for our sins. But the most important thing is, is we're supposed to teach them to observe his commandments. The love of God is great. The love of Jesus, is, he came, he died for our sins. That's great. But that, that, that's not the only part that there is. Jesus didn't say, go and can teach them all about, all about my love. He said, go teach them about my commandments. Tell them the do's and the don'ts. Tell them the things that they're supposed to do and tell them the ways that they're supposed to walk. Observe here comes from the word teros, which means to guard, to prevent from escaping, to note, and to fulfill the command. God said, Go teach them to observe, to guard my commandments, to prevent from their command, my commandments escaping from them. Tell them to take note of it. Tell them to fulfill the commandments of my commandments. Jesus gave the Great Commission telling us to tell the world, our family, again, our kids, our grandkids, our husbands, our wives, to note the things that he commanded us to do, the way we're supposed to walk the way we're supposed to talk, the way we're supposed to act, the way we're supposed to treat people. These are the things that God has told us to do because there is a godly way to walk. There is a godly way to talk. There is a godly way to act. There is a godly way to treat people. And God expects us to teach people how to do it. But if we never learn how to do it, if God has to give us lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson and we never learn to do it, eventually we fail the class. And when you fail the class, you've got to go back and do it all over again. If it's a required class, and I don't know about y'all, but salvation is pretty much required if you know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if there's no way we get the education, if there's no way that it sticks with us, how can I expect to teach my kids? How can I, if I don't know, uh, uh, my language is supposed to be clean, how am I supposed to teach my kids my language is supposed to be clean? If I know I ain't supposed to do drink, do drugs, do this stuff, if I don't figure that out, how in the world am I supposed to teach my kids? What are they going to see? If I, they don't see me being faithful to church, what's my, how am I going to teach my kids to be faithful to church? One of, the most thing, one of the things that irks me more than anything is these parents that go out and try to teach kids, oh, you're supposed to do this, this, and then they, they're, they're, they, they themselves are not doing it. You're wasting your time. Your kids are going to end up just like you are. Education. Learning is as much as part of teaching as teaching is. And we have to learn how to learn. We have to learn to learn the commandments of God. We have to learn the things that God has taught us. We have to learn through the study and through instruction. You want your family to go to hell? What, what did God, you know, is there a hell? Does everybody believe in hell? I mean, seriously, let's just, let's, just speak, let's just tell the truth. Do you really believe in hell and do you believe people are going to go to hell? Or, is it, or do you have in this mindset, oh, Jesus is going to be, it's all going to be all. Only people that go to hell is the ones that stab people and kill people and the Hitlers. They're the only ones that's going to go. There's all kinds of good people that are out there that, that, that have never found truth, that's never walked in the commandments of God, that are going to go to hell because they never learned to walk in the commandments of God. The old song, good old boys ain't going to make it to heaven, that's the truth. And I don't care, the, the Bible does not back up any, any and everybody going to heaven. It does not back that up. 
when I can see salvation, I only see it one way. I, I, if you don't believe that, I'm sorry. I didn't write the book. I wish I, I, if I'd have wrote the book, it would have been a whole lot easier. But we have to learn through the commandments. We can, I can study the Word. We learn through study. We learn through instruction. We learn through experience. I can study the Word. You can read the Bible. You can glean the information that you need. You can read the commandments, just like I talked to you about. Read Deuteronomy 28. Read, put yourself in those shoes. Re, seriously, read that this week. You can read the commandments. You can learn to follow them. Bring uh, 2 Timothy 2, 14 and 15. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Paul is talking to Timothy, and he's telling, who's them? That's us. Okay, all the people you talk to, Timothy, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to profit, but to the subverting of the, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study. He told us to study, to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, being able to rightly divide. I shouldn't be ashamed when people, when it comes comes to start talking about the Bible. I, I, I know what the pastor preaches and what Dwayne teaches and what some of the but I, don't ask me. Go talk. To, man, all of us should be able to be able. To, we we we're grown ups. We should be grown ups in God. We should be we should be big, big boys and big girls. We should be able to talk about what salvation's all about. You can be instructed like I'm doing right now. I'm instructing you guys. You need to learn. From me teaching you, you need to learn from the pastor preaching to you or anybody else. Follow the commandments of God. I'm telling you, I'm teaching you right now. I'm instructing you. Follow the commandments of God because you ain't. If you don't, you're in for a world of hurting. You can forget. You can forget because the curses are going to overtake you eventually if you don't learn how to do it. But we need instruction. I need instruction. We all need instruction. Bring up Proverbs 4 and 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Bring up the next one. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. The person that refused to learn, poverty and shame. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. And the next one. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. It's all about instruction. Receive it. When you're sitting here, don't sit there and, oh, I know this is hurting my feelings. I'm just going to ignore it. I know. No. You know, all the kids, you know, it's these kids in school, I don't want to learn. I don't. When you don't learn, I'm sure Sister April, when she's sitting there teaching, you got kids that are looking up in la-la land, and she's wanting to reach out, and you need to listen because the test is getting ready to come up. The pastor's sitting here preaching, and we're going, and the pastor says, you better listen because the test is getting ready to come up. You're about ready to get ready to take a final exam, and if you fail that exam, you're fouled. You're fouled in a big way. We've been given something that a lot of people don't get. We've been blessed to hear. I've heard enough preaching that it's been able to say, should be able to save the world, Brother Clarence. If people had ears to be able to be instructed, if people had ears to be able to hear, to listen, to be able to study, we, should, man, that, we, our church should be able to fill up. The, the, the building should be able to fill up up there where Hollybrook is. Half the, half the county, but most of the county should be here. Heed the lesson. And just like David, the lessons that you've already learned, trusting in God, we can learn through experience. We get to experience things. Trusting God for healing, for provision, for a sound mind. If we don't learn the lessons, the things that God has already given us, the trusting in God, trusting God for provision, trusting God for healing, trusting God for sound mind, things like that, for, for the Piedmont prayer, we'll forget it. We'll forget about those things. The next thing you'll know, you'll be trusting in your own understanding. I know, I know the pastor says this, but I, I really think it really means this. We'll be trusting in other men's understanding. We'll go out and find whatever other kind of doctrine. I've seen people in here that's decided they're going to do it their way. Next thing you know, they're doing other doctrines. and they're hmm. Learn to study. Learn through instruction. But you can learn, again, from experience as well. You get to learn from the experiences of others. Bring up Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are passed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We've got all these people. We, I get to watch all you guys and see all the ways that God has blessed you. And I get to say, I got that too. I can get, I can get access to this. Let us lay aside, now that I've seen all this, lay aside every weight. Lay aside every sin that besets us, that so easily besets us. And let us run the race with, run with patience the race that's set before us. We're surrounded by witnesses in the Bible, but here too, Brother Jerry. 
Uh, you remember I got the book, and Sister Lewis has right, got it right now. You know, we talked about the book of remembrance. I don't know if y'all remember it or whatever. I said, so let's start a book of remembrance when there's praises and things that God done and stuff. Let's take it. And so uh, she's got it right now, and she's working on it. But uh, mid-June 2016, we had that little tur- that little thing set there born to us. And, w- and we could trust God for that, you know. You put trust. And now we know that I can trust God before he was even born, you got prayed for, right? And he was all worried about it. And he was born, and he was premature, and oh, my goodness. But, but you trusted God, and <laughs> he's up there this morning. We got an experience there that if somebody goes through the same thing, God's faithful. I have learned that I can trust God in that. November the 22nd, 2015, Sister Larissa, thank God for taking care of Nolan for her allergic reaction. 6-5, 2016, Tracy, thank God because God protected Ethan through an allergic reaction to cashews. You had one, here was one experience, and now you can trust God. we got two allergic reactions we've been able to, thank God God can take care of us through allergic reactions. God can protect us from that. November 15th, 2015, Brother Mike thanked God because a bull had turned on him while he was in work in the chute, and he was able to get out of there safely without getting hurt. Sister Joanne, uh, November 12th, 2015, had her little tack. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it was. She had her little tack, and she passed out, and when she passed out, her head went down, and she couldn't breathe. Brother David, I remember him calling me about it. She couldn't move. Didn't know what happened. We thought, she's going to die. She's she not here, but she's still over there being mean to Brother Bobby, or Brother Passion, everybody. November 15th, Tammy thanks God for taking care of Angel for during a heart attack. She's still here. We learn through these experiences, and we know that through all these experiences, we, that's why I wanted that book. And every now and then, man, it wouldn't hurt to go through it. Man, I remember that. All right. Oh, man, I remember that. I remember when God did that. Oh, good, good book. oh man, God, that, all that one. And I, oh, man, we, got, we are surrounded with such a cloud of, of the pastor with his experiences and with everybody else. I, I, I thank God for those experiences. Brother Clarence, with yours, I know God can take, worried about provision, worried about your job, but you know what? God's taking care of you, ain't it? Have you missed any meals? If you did, it was only because you wanted to, right? Every now and then, it wouldn't hurt us to miss a meal once in a while. We can learn through these experiences. We can learn through all these. But what if we never learned to study through study? What if we never learned through instruction? What if we never learned through the experiences of God? Or even our own good experiences that God, the experiences of others, or even the experiences that God gives us. What if we never learn to walk in God's paths? What if we never learn from the things that God has given us to learn from? What if we decide to walk whichever way we want? We come to church and say, you know, you know, everything's God's great. You know, we, we can do whatever we want to. What about your family? Who's going to teach them? Who's going to reach out to them? Again, you believe in hell? You believe your family's going to go to hell? You want them saved? Jesus taught the disciples. They learned it, and then they taught it. You go to Christ. You take Christ with you to them. You go to Christ. You take Christ with you to them. But if you never learn the you to Christ part... How are you going to take them to them? If you never learn Acts 2.38, how are you going to teach it? If you never learn Jesus is God in flesh, how are you going to be able to teach that? If you never learn to walk in his ways, how in the world are you going to teach that? Jesus calls us to teach. And if we don't learn, we will never be able to teach it. Sister Lynn started here pretty much on her own, by herself. But then Sister Darlene and Brother Charlie, Sister Shirley, all the brothers have been in here at some point. No, at, at, right, Sister Darling? Oh, there's Lynn. I see her. Every one of them's been in here at some point, ain't they? Just about, ain't they, Lynn? Now, she can't save them, but she did her part to get them in here, didn't she? She done what she needed to do to get them in here. That's the, that's the only thing you're called to do. You can't save. All you can do is get them in here. We're called to evangelize. We're not all evangelists. We're not evangelists, but we're called to evangelize the world. Bring up Hebrews, and I'll shut up after this one. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For when the time you ought to be teachers, when you're at the point that you should be teachers, when we should be teaching, you have need that one teach you. Again, which means you've already been taught, and you didn't learn. So now you've got to be taught again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. 
and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of, of righteousness, for he is a babe. Well, I guess one more. But strong meat belong to them that are full of age, even those by, uh, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. When you're a baby, you don't know the difference between good and evil. You don't know the difference between right and wrong. I mean, you just, I, I figure he thinks he can go to any, touch the stove and he can go touch anything that he wants to, don't you? you have to constantly be on the guard for him. I can eat cookies. I can have whatever I want to eat. I can go do where, I can go in front of any dog. I'll walk in the horses. I'll walk where I want because he don't have no understanding of what good, what's right and what's wrong. Don't know what's good and what's wrong. When you're a baby, when you're a baby, you ain't no good to anybody. Because somebody's going to have to be taking you up. But, but once, you, once you get to the point where you've been taught enough, and you've been instructed enough, and you should have been studying, and you've had the experiences, you should be grown up enough now that where you should be able at the point where we, we should be teaching. We should, have a, a, we, should, we should have a church full of teachers here. we got people that need to be taught, but we should have a church full of teachers. And if the whole church is a bunch of babies, how are we going to have babies? Because babies can't have babies. It's impossible. And we're called to have children. We're go, go forth and multiply. That's what God tells us to do. So learn to learn so that you can learn to teach, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Give God a big hand.